Hi, I'm glad you could join me. Clients and readers frequently ask me if they should use OsteoStrong. As a clinician, I will only recommend a modality when it has, can demonstrate that it's effective and a safe way to improve bone health. Recently, OsteoStrong identified a study out of Greece that they claimed supports that their evidence does improve bone health. However, a review of the study by a leading bone health research lab at the University of Waterloo in Canada shows that the study falls short of meeting the standards expected of such research. In this video, I will summarize the key findings of the University of Waterloo review. I'm always open to new research and I get very excited when I see good studies in the field of bone health. However, after looking at the review by the University of Waterloo, I don't recommend OsteoStrong at this point in time. Now, let's get on to the key points from the University of Waterloo Review. In February 2025, researchers in Greece published a study on OsteoStrong in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. This study, which was funded by OsteoStrong, claimed that the program effectively increased bone mineral density, improved bone quality, and delivers other health benefits. Sounds promising, right? Well, let's take a closer look at what the research community is saying about the study. Professor Laura Gian Gringorio, a leading researcher in osteoporosis and exercise from the University of Waterloo, recently published a thorough review of this study. Professor Laura is highly respected in her field with numerous publications on osteoporosis and exercise. Her analysis revealed several concerning issues that anyone considering OsteoStrong should be aware of. Well, let's break them down. First thing, according to Professor Laura, the OsteoStrong study fails to meet even the most fundamental standards expected in scientific research. No clear objectives or hypothesis. No information about ethical approval no clear statistical analysis plan, incomplete description of data collection methods, and no clear information about what the control group actually did. Scientific research follows internationally accepted standards and checklists for reporting. Alarmingly, this study is missing most of these elements. Second, there's a lack of trial registration. The scientific community agrees that all clinical trial protocols should be registered in a widely available online registry. This ensures that there's transparency. Without this registration, no one can confirm whether the researchers followed their original plan or if they changed their methods to align with the desired outcomes. Professor Laura went out of her way and actually contacted both authors and the university's ethic board to determine if the trial was registered, but received no response. That's a red flag. Third, this appears to be what Professor Laura calls a low quality study with a high risk of bias. Rather than using a randomized controlled trial, the gold standard in research, participants were allowed to choose whether they wanted to be in the control group or the osteostrong group. This self-selection creates an immediate bias as people eager to participate in the osteostrong may have had different health statuses or habits than those who opted out. Additionally, there's no indication that the study blinded the assessors, meaning the people evaluating the outcome knew which participants were in which group. This knowledge can significantly influence results. Next. Let's talk about confounding factors. Professor Laura noted it was unusual that the study enrolled participants who were taking osteoporosis medications. Many of these medications increase bone mineral density on their own, which confounds the results, especially if the type of medications varied among participants, the duration of use differed, or if the number of participants was too small to separate medications effect from osteostrong effects. The study provides very little information about these medications, meaning it wasn't actually designed to ac accurately test the effects of osteostrong independent 
of medication effects. Now for the crucial question that most of you care about. Does osteostrong increase bone mineral density? Surprisingly, we don't know the answer because the authors didn't report any analysis comparing bone mineral density changes between the osteostrong group and the control group. Instead, they reported other statistics that aren't typically used or accepted in clinical trials. The scientific standard is to focus on whether the bone mineral density change in one group is statistically different from that of the other group. Without this comparison, we can't draw conclusions about effectiveness. The study also had serious issues with statistical analysis. Professor Laura points out that the average bone mineral density was already different between the groups at the start of the study. She also points out that there was no information about how researchers handled baseline differences, missing data, or outliers. Some participants showed changes that seemed impossibly large. Professor Laura noted several errors and outliers in the paper, suggesting that a closer examination of the data and statistical analysis is warranted. It's also worth noting that this study was funded by a private company that owns OsteoStrong franchises. Although the authors disclosed this funding, there remains significant potential for conflict of interest. The scientific community's response has been significant. Professor Laura and the Bone Health and Exercise Science Lab at the University of Waterloo, along with other scientists globally, including researchers at Harvard, have made the journal editors aware of their concerns and have called for the paper's retraction. Importantly, the senior author of the study is an editor for the journal where it was published, raising additional questions about the review process. So what does all this mean if you're concerned about your bone health and considering OsteoStrong? In Professor Laura's professional opinion, which I too share, it is not possible to draw any meaningful conclusions from this study or from any of the published research on OsteoStrong to date. The Bone Health and Exercise Science Lab and their international colleagues, and I'm on board, do not recommend making decisions to participate in OsteoStrong based on this new study. The serious methodological flaws, potential conflicts of interest, and lack of proper statistical analysis means that the reported benefits cannot be trusted. There are reportedly two other studies about OsteoStrong that haven't been published yet. These may provide more insight into whether OsteoStrong is truly effective. But until then, I recommend approaching claims about OsteoStrong with healthy skepticism. Your bone health is too important to entrust to interventions without solid scientific backing. As we learn more about OsteoStrong through future research, I'll continue to share updates with you on this channel. Remember, improving and maintaining bone health is a long-term commitment that typically involves multiple approaches working together. There are no quick fixes or miracle solutions, but there are evidence-based strategies that can help you maintain your bone density, reduce your fracture risk, and keep you safe as you age. You can find the links to Professor Laura's video as well as the OsteoStrong study in the description box below. And if you're looking for an evidence-based exercise routine, I've assembled a number of safe and effective workouts in the list here. Thank you for joining me today and take care.